What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is about a very interesting new cannon ship for the Empire, the Onager Class Star Destroyer. This was purpose made to eliminate the most deeply entrenched rebels with a powerful main gun that is classified as a super weapon. We will get into the size comparison and complete breakdown of its abilities and uses, but let's start with its history. It was developed in secret as a part of the Empire's want to use kyber crystals to power super weapons. After the fall of the Jedi, Jeddah was quickly overrun with Imperials, and the way the Empire was scooping up all the kyber crystals made the Rebels think that they must be crucial to the Emperor's new plans. It is interesting that some of the early kyber researchers like Galen Erso were researching theories that the crystal could be used to provide power in remote areas of the galaxy. The energy output, when properly activated, could be like a nuclear power plant without the radioactive waste. But some rebel spies had heard of something known as a planet killer. This made a lot of people think that Imperial R&D wasn't worried about providing Tatooinean farmers with enough power to finally run a decent air conditioning. They knew something more sinister was going on here, and so General Kraken of the Rebel Alliance created teams of investigators to piece together all the disparate facts so that they could try and get a picture of what the Emperor was doing. Kraken chose Alliance Intelligence Major Captain Harinar and Colonel Haxon Delto to study two terms that kept popping up. Harinar presented what was known about something called Operation Cinder, a convoluted project that somehow involved advanced droid AIs, but also weather manipulation technology. Delto presented information on the Siege Breaker. Not much could be uncovered, but this could explain the Empire's insatiable need for kyber crystals. They presented their findings to Mon Mothma sometime around 10 BBY. They said that just as a lightsaber could easily cut through almost anything in the galaxy, if the Siege Breaker really was powered by kyber crystals as well, no fortress, no matter how deep inside a planet's cave systems, or how powerful their shield generator was, it would eventually be cut through. This is impossible! All this was documented in the Rebel Files, and Kraken speculated to Mon Mothma that this weapon would be much more likely than the whispered about planet killer. You can make a thousand of these for the cost of a single planet destroying super weapon, and if placed inside of a star destroyer sized vessel as proposed, it would be much more versatile and widespread. It is believed that the Onager class was completed in 5 BBY and tested throughout some remote locations. One of them was named the Rake Hell and was seen escorted by two Victory class Star Destroyers. The Cataclysm was once spotted near a pair of gravity wells, and it is unknown if these were natural or the cause of an interdictor. But now there was proof of the Siege Breaker's existence, and its debut was horrifying. It was indeed powered by kyber crystals, powering these experimental super heavy composite beam turbo lasers. This image gives you a good look at the double barrel design of these amazing weapons. There are no official numbers, but it would appear to be about the same size as a Victory class, so 900 meters, or 0.56 miles long. This would make just the guns 643 meters, or 2,110 feet long. That's almost two Arquidens class light cruisers, or more than four CR-90s of just the energizing barrel. That also makes it more than three times the length of the Super Laser Siege Cannon used by the First Order, something that was very similar in design and purpose. For a real-world comparison, it would be nearly 14 times the largest gun ever built on Earth, the Schwerer Gustav, and about a third of the length of the Brooklyn Bridge. But how did it work? Seeing that it stops just before the solar ionization reactor that is common to all other ISDs, I think it is safe to say that this superweapon passed energy created from the main reactors through the kyber crystals to intensify and focus the beam. But unlike the steady beams of energy like the Death Stars or the FO Doorbreaker, the Onager works like a turbo laser, just with a lot more power. It fires bolts, and its role is specifically for planetary bombardments. And though this series of rings looks badass, it has a purpose and is actually a galvaning system that was crucial to this weapon's power. Galvaning systems are in most Star Wars blasters. Han Solo's DL-44 had a custom galvan system that enabled each bolt to accumulate more energy without drawing more power from the battery. And similarly, the Empire's medium and long-range blasters use a galvaning system to keep the plasma bolts more cohesive and powerful over longer distances. It is important to point out that it isn't saying that the barrel is galvanized. It isn't saying that it's metal covered so it doesn't rust. So not like how we normally use the term here on Earth, but think of it like these barrels are allowing the plasma to sort of coat itself in a layer that keeps it more coherent, making it more like a bullet instead of a dispersed blob of plasma. 
drawing from a Star Destroyer reactor, amplified by Kybers, and concentrated along a 600 meter long barrel, meant each of these rounds was enough to blow deep through solid rock and override all but the galaxy's strongest shield generators. This is something I'm sure Thrawn wish he had access to. He had faced some rebels in 2 BBY that overtook an Imperial garrison and used a series of shield generators, ion cannons, and turbo lasers to keep the Empire at bay. Thrawn had to come up with a very unique way of overcoming these shields, which I won't spoil here, but it is interesting to note that the Empire had the Onager at this time. The cell wasn't that big of a threat, so perhaps the Empire didn't want to show their hand. Remember, they still weren't sure if the Death Star concept would pan out, so better to deploy your Siege Breakers when you finally find the Rebels' home base, which surely would have been defended with multiple shield generators. But there is a lot more to this weapon than just its raw power. The barrel allowed it to fire from what is described as beyond long range, making it essentially a sniper that shot massive lightsaber bolts through mountains. Don't know if I can describe a weapon much cooler than that. Oh, and this double barrel design was so that the bolts could alternate fire between them, so that in effect you were having continuous fire. But because they went with the massive bolts instead of a continuous beam, the damage was inflicted like a series of hammer blows instead of just one big push. It's all amazing, but of course no ship is perfect. Only drawback is that this thing should have been covered in anti-starfighter weaponry, like flak guns and point defense laser cannons, especially around this opening. Not sure why this has to be open, I imagine the only reason would be due to the massive amounts of heat, but it is definitely something that a rebel pilot could take advantage of. If this cannot be covered in armor, it should be covered in weapons designed to take out fighters and bombers. It did have these two hangars on the front T-section, which would have been packed full of TIE fighters and their multiple variants. That's good, but again, that opening just screams, send your fighter with the strongest plot armor right here. Other than that, it has a different bridge design, still a command tower jutting out, but with the shield generator slash sensor globes dropped down here. I believe this may reveal a major fear on the part of the ship's developers. Perhaps if this area, right where the energy was being drawn from the reactor to the kyber, was directly hit by a rebel attack, the chain reaction would be immense and immediate. Anyone looking at this ship could tell that the gun part starts at this section, so taking the external shield generators away from the bridge, and more towards this area, ensures that it is the most defended. We've seen how a large, single kyber can blow apart a whole fleet, so maybe this is why the Onager was supposed to hang back and fire from beyond long range, away from all the other ships of the fleet, and why these shields are moved to right over the Kyber housing. So now that we know how it works, let's go back to its history and how it influenced the First Order. Some of these ships were still operating after the Emperor's death, and were considered one of the most powerful things in the Imperial Remnant. Decades later, the First Order would develop weapons based on this shield-breaking siege weapon concept. When Snoke finally identified the Resistance base on Dakar, the Mandator 4 class Siege Dreadnought opened fire with its pair of orbital autocannons. The fact that it was two guns and alternating fire, sending bolts instead of a continuous beam, was all inspired by the Onager. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. The Onager was a siege weapon used by the Roman Empire. It was a kind of small catapult that was first mentioned in 353 AD. But the weapon itself was named after the animal known as the Onager, aka the Asiatic Wild Ass, a species in the horse family. This weapon built up a lot of power, that when the stone was released, the whole thing would buck up into the air, like the hooves of the Onager. The ship was first mentioned and pictured in the canon book Star Wars The Rebel Files back in 2017, but it finally gets some lore details in a miniature via a 2019 expansion pack for Star Wars Armada and this comes alongside the Starhawk. What do you think of this ship? Do you like the look of it? How about its role and function? And do you hope to see it in future Star Wars material, set before the Battle of Yavin, or even during the Imperial Remnant? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, at any moment, your secret rebel base deep in a cave system could get 360 no-scoped by the Empire's lightsaber-shooting sniper ship. And the Force will be with you, always.